and welcome to another season of VM End to End. This is a show where we have a former reformed VM skeptic pair up with a VM enthusiast, and we, we go in deep into what's happening in the VM world. Uh, Brian, it's good to see you. I'm happy you're here again. Likewise. Yes, today's episode is going to be fun because uh, we have a world record holder on board today this time. We're talking with Emma Awal, the first person to ever know what the 100th trillionth digit, 100th trillionth digit of pi was. It was zero. Hi, Emma. Hi, thank you for having me today. I'm really excited to talk about pi and washing machines. Can you give us a quick overview of the, of the world record? Sure. So this year in 2022, we calculated 100 trillion digits of pi using Google Cloud. And this is the second time we calculate pi using cloud. And the first time was in 2019 with um, 31.4 trillion digits. And this time we tripled the digits uh, in three years. And we use the same program called White Cruncher. You can download it from the web and try it on your laptop or desktop. But uh, the, the change is the performance improvements in the compute engine uh, platform. So it's three times in three years, but that's not like um, a linear difficulty, is it? It's, it's increasingly more difficult. Uh, the amount of data you need to move actually increases faster than the number of digits. So if you want to calculate twice as much, you need to calculate more than twice as much. Got it. Okay, so um, Emma has also um, talked about this in a lot of places. So you know, if you are interested in like uh, more overview or more kind of historical context, please check out the links below. We will have some additional things. But in this gathering, we're talking about virtual machines. We're talking about Compute Engine. Um, we're talking about like how things actually you know work in in the cloud. Um, and this is why I'm excited. But I, I think one of the questions that people often ask or maybe snarkily comment about when this topic comes up is like, I'm not calculating pi, you know, why does this matter? So and I'm curious, like, what did you learn from this? And what, what parts of that would be helpful to other people who are not calculating pi? Of course. So virtual machines are everywhere. We, we use the same virtual machines you can use on Google Cloud, Computer Engine, um, and even if you use Kubernetes or some other management software, you still use virtual machine as one of the fundamental components. And all the optimization, optimization techniques are the same for other applications, web, web, web servers, database servers, and anything else. So it's, it's essentially the, the process of optimization, tuning, understanding the architecture. Um, and all the techniques I use in these projects are something I learned over the years um, as a software engineer and managing web servers and optimizing web applications. So yes, the end result is pi because it's a cool mathematical number, but the journey is pretty much the same for any other uh, web applications or, or, or maybe desktop applications as well. Got it. So you you did a whole bunch of iterations on, on tuning and try to figure this out. Is that is that fair? Yeah. Um, we used um, scripts to automate the process. Uh, we tried hundreds of different configurations, including OS, um, YCrunch itself, the platform. Uh, we used Terraform and shell scripts, Ruby scripts to um, um, try try everything. Um, we published all the scripts on GitHub, so you can check it out and actually see the script and see what 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 happened. Awesome. That was that was going to be my follow up. Can can people check them out? So that's perfect. Um, I'm excited. I hope people check that out. Yeah, I'm I'm actually curious because this is VM end to end. That means we can go more specifically into compute and VMs and what it does. So could you nerd out a little bit for us and maybe tell us or talk to us about architecting this Pi calculator on GCE? Like I'm sure you ran into bottlenecks and places where you got stuck. Where were they? What were they? Help us out. Yeah, of course. Um, so for 100 trillion digits of pi, we need about 500, 600 terabytes of storage and or memory if you have memory. But you don't have 600 terabytes of memory on a single computer, so you need to attach disks. And the maximum amount of persistent disk you can attach to a virtual machine is what 257 terabytes. 
which is not exactly small, but it is not enough for this kind of cal calculations. So why Cruncher is a single node application. We used a virtual machine with N2 high memory 128, uh, which has 128 vCPUs and 864 gigabytes of memory. And we um, used 32 additional virtual machines as storage servers and attach all the disks using the network. And the biggest bottleneck is um, storage performance. So you need to move a lot of data. Um, for 100 units, it's 82 petabytes. And a petabyte is a thousand terabyte, so it's a lot of data. Um, so there are a lot of tunables in the network platform. Obviously, you have uh, different TCP IP tu tuning parameters, um, congestion control algorithms, disk scheduling algorithms uh, in, in Linux. And you have like specific, very, very uh, detailed way of like tuning uh, the platform software to get a full performance. And the last time the network throughput was 16 gigabits per second. And this time it's 100 gigabits per second. It's six times as fast. And filling the bandwidth, uh, for example, is a significant challenge. And there are a lot of uh, back and forth and try and errors in the process. Wow, it's mind blowing just how much data you're moving around. Uh, even the storage is a lot, but there's so much more data in transit. It just boggles the mind. So it's it's really interesting. You you have a lot of data, and you need to get every bit correct. You can't even mess up a single bit. Then your entire result will be broken. So you need to make you need to make sure that your architecture is reliable, not only fast but it's also reliable as well. Okay, so you have to move 80 some petabytes of data without ever making a mistake in even a single bit. That that sounds hard. Um and and this is you know the second time you've done a world record in cloud. So I'm I'm curious for, with your experience, you know, what what was easy about doing it in cloud, what was hard uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, sure. So it's easy because you don't need to for example, design a completely different architecture. It's not like building everything from scratch on a supercomputer. Um, but it's still difficult because we are very, very close to the architecture limits. Um, we use 100 gigabits per second Ethernet, which is very close to what we have as industry. And after moving 82 petabytes of data, it's not a trivial task. And and because we are close to the architecture performance um, limits, uh, we had to work very hard and make sure we um, were able to use all the potential uh, perform performance potentials of, of the platform. And after, after trying out hundreds of different parameters, we made the architecture twice as fast. So comparing the first prototype and the last, the final architecture, the final architecture is twice as fast. So the calculation would have taken more than 300 days if we just use the first, first prototype. That is a good takeaway for everybody who's you know hitting bottlenecks in cloud. You know, like some iteration over a test or a benchmark, you know, can really help in the long term. And I guess the other thing in cloud is you know kind of the time and money mapping are really close. So if you spend half as much time, it costs half as much money to do something. Cool. Wow. Yeah. I so what you just said. I'm going to recap. I could be a little bit off, but you basically said the first time you did this in 2019, uh, the network was a big bottleneck. In 2022, it was more the the limits of what CPUs and in, in, in uh, not CPUs, but computers themselves can do, not so much the the data traveling. Does that mean, like, I guess, what does that mean for the future of Pi and the future of Pi World Records? Are we going to stop seeing new ones broken or what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, that's a good question. I think we we can obviously in, increase the number of digits as computers get faster, um, but we want to see more fundamental changes uh, if you want to calculate uh, more digits, like 100 times more. Um, after all, in, in, in the 1940s, we started with 2,000 digits with the, the first computer, and today we have 100 trillion digits in 70 years. So if we want to, for example, calculate uh, 100 million trillion digits. We we need to actually solve a lot of pro lot of problems. Um, the processors are fast actually, uh, but memory disks and 
not as fast. And obviously, we, we want to increase the network bandwidth as well. And there are a lot of uh, fine tunables um, you need to work on. And we probably want to see some fundamental changes to the compu computer architecture and the software design. Um, even if we are just calculating one quadrillion digits, uh, we probably want to like come, um, come up with new creative ideas to um, fully utilize the performance of the um, fast computers in the future. Oh, thank you, Emma. This is so much to think about. And um, I, I, I really, I don't know, I want to mention again that this iterated iteration of kind of testing and things is something everyone kind of can apply to their uh, challenges, I think. Um, and for anybody watching, like if you're hungry for more information about Pi, about uh, these world record, um, you know, uh, challenges, uh, about Emma's work, about the math in general, um, she's talked to a lot of different folks in different contexts about this. So we're gonna have some links uh, down below for more info. Um, and to the scripts, if you want to, you know, see how she actually tested this for real. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Emma, so much for coming in. Uh, Brian, as always, thank you for being a great host. And uh, yeah, next week, if if you want more, we've got a, a very special episode with a very special guest. I'm not going to give anything away, uh, but definitely stay tuned for that one more time. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> <laughs>